years with Scholar Winner, Komal Goyle. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you, Opal? Good. How are you enjoying yourself at this year's K-Scope? Very nicely. Actually, uh, I love Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the places I've always wanted to be mm -hmm. for a longer time because when I go to India, I just fly through Chicago and I never get to stay here. So great place to do, the, to do this conference. And how many years have you been coming to K-Scope? Um, I've been to the Seattle K-Scope mm -hmm. um, and then I missed the Orlando one. Okay. Um, so this is my second okay. K-Scope. So I was actually on the committee that reviewed all the applicants and yours was definitely one that stuck out. Uh, why don't you share a little bit of your story and how you got here in the position that you're in? All right, so my story. Um, when I hear about women in technology or women in general, women entrepreneurs or uh, women achievers, one of the things I do have to say here, Opal, is I'm a big fan of he for she. I don't know if you know that moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that movement uh, sort of is very dear to me because I won't be here where I am today without two men in my life, my father and my husband. Mm -hmm. So um, I love the women, uh, women entrepreneurship or women movements, but I do think that um, we are not complete without each other. So uh, men supporting women and what they want to do and vice versa mm -hmm. um, is very, very important. So yeah, my men in my life have been instrumental in making me get where I am today. Okay. And there's also a large, long background that you have in the technology sector that was um, very memorable from your application. Why don't you tell us about your background in technology? So, uh, my story actually starts from my high school. Um, being in India, you know, an 18-year-old, uh, it's it used to be very common back then to get proposals like mm. matrimonial proposals, and. Uh, I was not an anomaly. I, I got, an, uh, got a proposal as well at the age of 18. And uh, I was a very good math and science student. Mm -hmm. So my father saw that spark in me. And this uh, wedding proposal was making me giddy almost. Mm. You know, at the age of 18, you're getting married to this industrialist of the, of the town. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fun thing for an 18-year-old. Mm. So my dad asks me this question. Um, he says, uh, I know you're very happy about what, what's happening to you. Are you, are you realizing uh, what, what will happen in the next five years? And I'm like, yeah, I will finish my uh, undergrad. I'll finish my grad school and I will work. Mm -hmm. And he says, whoa, 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 <laughs> step back. Step back for a second because I, I'm an Indian man and I know how Indian men work. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I was like, why do you say that? And he was like, well, one, he's an industrialist. He himself doesn't have a degree. What, do you, what makes you think that he cares for your degree? Mm -hmm. so, so he sort of talked me out of that whole scenario that was being built for me by my, by my family. And uh, I was on a path. He saw that spark which I was not able to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next thing was I was uh, an undergrad, computer science undergrad mm -hmm. in, in India. I was the first batch of, of my entire city wow. and the first girl to get into oh, wow. computer science. Yeah. And then uh, obviously the master's uh, was a, um, a path that had to happen mm -hmm. in India. Nobody talks about <laughs> education unless it is master's, right? So, uh, yeah, I ended up with master's in computer science. And then, you know, I just uh, followed my, my, my passion of uh, staying in technology, worked for GE for some time. I have worked for KPMG as well and then have been independent consultant for a long time. And then uh, in 2013, I took over this company and uh, I'm running the uh, 60 Technologies now. Congratulations. Thank you. What are some of the challenges that you faced as a woman in technology? Oh, wow. Um, so as big a fan I am of for about he for she, I also know that men can be a big obstacle. <laughs> if. Uh, if they really don't truly believe in you, yeah. and I've faced that, okay. faced that very closely, and has uh, has actually had impacted my self-esteem. To be honest with you, in the beginning, um, I was questioned at every 
step off my corporate uh, career if I was capable of doing what I was doing. Uh, not only uh, in in the in the settings where the questions were very sharp and very straight in my face, but also almost like a gossip that she does not know what she's doing. Mm. I I used to hear that from my other peers who were supportive of me to watch uh, watch that person or that person, and I'm saying person, I'm I mean a man, and I've seen that cha- you know I've, the challenge was. Um, was enormous. I have to say that, um, and uh, my my heartburn about those years is that someone with my similar degree, similar skill set, if was a male, had no reason to prove himself, and was not required to prove. Where I had to prove my worth, my skill set, and my being every step of the way. How did you overcome those challenges? My husband, I have to tell you that one supportive, uh, close, maybe a friend or or a relative, or in my, in my case, my husband and my father was still alive at that time. I would pick up the phone and I would sometimes call him in India and ask him what should be my next step. Let's see. Did you think it was difficult for a man to give advice about the plight of women? Um, actually. It's the opposite because they see it from a different perspective than we are mm. seeing. They are outside of that circle okay. and they're seeing it objectively, mm. and they can give you better advice than than a girlfriend would because she is actually getting into the, those emotions that mm. you're going through. Mm-hmm. So my 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 answer would be absolutely opposite. Okay. And when you look at today's world and what you're encountering with today's culture and technology, uh, what do you think are some of the challenges that women are facing today? Um, What's happening is uh, the girls still have to prove themselves. I have two girls, Mm -hmm. um, and both of them are science students. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing is actually... Uh, in in classroom, I go to my uh, high schoolers' classroom, mm-hmm. and what I see is almost disheartening, to mm-hmm. be honest with you. Okay. Where if a girl is in a math or a science class, she takes a long time to stand up and ask questions because mm-hmm. the boys are almost bullying girls. At it, and this mm-hmm. this is the, it just breaks my heart that this happens in this day and age, but this is happening. Yeah. And, and and what happens is by the time the girl gets into 10th or 11th grade, the, the, the questions that she had as a 6th or a 7th or 8th grader are kind of being pushed down because she's so afraid of asking those questions. Mm-hmm. And, and that, um, uh, that sprouting technologist is mm-hmm. sort of lost somewhere. Yeah. And then even if they want to stick to the technology arena, what they do is they go into soft technologies, so technology management or um, some sort of um, uh, technology sales or right. marketing, mm-hmm. which you know they're capable of actually doing so much. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I still see that happening. What do you think we can do to change the plight of women today? Uh, I think um, I'm a big fan of uh, Girls Who Code. Mm-hmm. That uh, organization is doing very well mm-hmm. and is bringing girls out to um, t- to the to the forefront, so to speak. Um, as as women in technology, I think we should actually adopt. We should we should pledge to adopt two to four girls at one given time and just mentor them. Yeah. Mentor them, whether they're your daughters or your sisters' daughters or relatives or friends' daughters. Like I have three girls I've adopted. Mm-hmm. One is set to go to MIT, one is my own daughter, and one is um, my friend's daughter. So three girls I'm mentoring just, and mentoring is not necessary to be, uh, you, you don't have to sit with them every month or so. All you have to do is just meet them or even call them mm-hmm. and ask them, how was the school today? Did you run into something that mm-hmm. bothered you? And then just walk them slowly through the process of, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, guys are like that. They will do mm-hmm. what they're doing. You, you know, just, just be resilient. So 
mentoring in my opinion just should happen mm -hmm. you know you should not create that formal relationship so to speak but I'm, I'm doing that for three girls right now that's fantastic wow. thank you so as we look to the remaining of this week, we have the WIT event, which is happening on Wednesday. And uh, we are going to do roundtables this year, which we did last year, to mm -hmm. talk about various topics regarding women in technology. Mm -hmm. What do you think Odie Tug can do um, to take this a step further, to reach all of the women in technology who might be feeling challenged? I think um, Organizations like Oditug have a lot of power to change things for women. Um, what my experience with uh, the technologist uh, women, in the beginning they come into programming and slowly you will see that falling and then they will slowly get into the management positions. Right. That's mm -hmm. happening more than you can ima even imagine. The, I, I don't have the data but I've seen uh, Kellen Popman talking about that data and it's, it's, it's not looking good right now. Mm -hmm. So somehow working with the management level people, because Oditug attracts the technologists, mm -hmm. If there is any way to connect with their uh, their mentors or their managers or their you know their upper management and making sure that there is no uh, there is no bullying going around mm. uh, mm -hmm. that particular um, area or or the the skill set they are in and that can happen only when you invite those managers over okay. to Oritag. Um so connecting with the management for the people who you are bringing to Odetag is, is one way to do it. And then have them sit in the mid sessions. Why okay. not? Sounds like a good idea. Now, also, you at your company, uh, you provide opportunities for women um, that I don't think I've seen this at a lot of other firms. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So, so I'm, I'm a big proponent of um, one step at a time, mm -hmm. one person at a time. Um, and then, you know, the the world changes slowly, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So my um, my personal uh, mission is to at least take one or two girls over the internship period on in, during summer in our company, mm -hmm. and if if they are trying to sway away from technology, they were in they were thinking of technology in until twelfth grade, for example, mm -hmm. and then they got so intimidated they said, "Oh no, no, business is okay. We'll do you know marketing, sales, whatever." Mm -hmm trying to bring them back and sort of expose them to what they can do yep. um, and then uh, and then let them let them take a decision on their own based on the experience they get in the company okay. so most of our interns either turn into our own company people or they actually pursue uh, degrees in IS which is which is amazing for me because I've been able to do uh, that with a couple of girls. That's fantastic. That's Thank really you. amazing that you're doing that. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> any other words of advice or anything else you'd like to say? Uh, I think our country is lacking. Uh, we're talking a lot about STEM program. Yes. Um, which is not bad. Mm -hmm. What I am seeing as an employer or as an entrepreneur is that the kids who come out of school mm -hmm. are very green. And it takes a lot for the employers to train them or bring them up to speed okay. based on what industry is doing. I think we're not doing enough from the sense of bringing industry to the school. There are no streamlined internship programs with the industry or even even challenging the schools with industry problems. Mm -hmm. I would, if I had a choice, if some school opened up for, for my industry problems, I would actually give those projects to those kids and mm -hmm. say, solve them. Okay. This, is, this is real life problem. Right. How will you solve it? So just some exposure from that standpoint. I think that would help them a lot because, you know, the, the job market has become global. Yes. We're competing with the rest of the seven billion people. Right. Let's just not forget it. Mm -hmm. So any school which is better than outside of US, mm -hmm. And uh, with technology, you can work from anywhere in the world. So yes. we can't take things for granted anymore. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations again thank on you. winning. Thank We're you. happy to have you thank here. You. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah.